Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video, another video where I've got something that's faulty and I'm going to try and fix it. So here we have two grandstand handheld electronic games. We have Firefox F7 on the left hand side here and we have Astro Wars on the right hand side here. Now these were given to me by my friend Hugh full name Hubert Goosangs yeah there you go and uh, basically he was clearing out his mum's loft attic because uh, she was moving out of the property and uh, he found these and unfortunately the batteries had been left in there and these must have been up in the loft for at least at least 20 something years so what's happened is the batteries have completely leaked now he said that they both of them weren't working but looking at this one here the terminals at the back look pretty good so I've got a feeling that uh, this one this one may be okay if we just move the batteries around a bit but let me show you the very bad one to begin with so if you have a look here you can see that the spring here is completely eroded away and there's a lot of rust on this side here so it's not even worth testing this one because what we'd have to do is we'd have to clean the spring and we'd have to pull it right the way out here so this is obviously going to need a spring replacement here now there may be other faults with this that I don't know about but when they were put away as far as he remembers they were working because they were his now if you have a look at this one this is amazing look at the amount of leakage on here but yet somehow it just about manages to miss the terminals, I mean, there is a bit of corrosion here, a little bit of corrosion around the place, but uh, that's pretty amazing, that is. So you would expect with that amount of leakage that there would be quite a bit of damage to there. So first of all, what we do is let's just pop the batteries in just to see if we've got anything. And then even if this is working here, I'm still going to take it apart because if you have a look, it's really dusty and really grimy. So I want to get it all looking good again. So if I can get these working, then what I'll do is I'm going to give them back to him and then he can sell them on eBay because he's been selling a lot of his old stuff on there because, you know, some of the toys from the 1980s and stuff can actually be worth a little bit of money. All right, let's uh, see if this is working or not. Um, it's not okay fair play I thought that would be working but it's not again it could be just dirty contacts but there's there's nothing there at the moment right okay let's put these batteries in well actually there's no point in even doing the Firefox because of the spring there I'll have to stretch it over and even if I did get it to work it's not going to be a good enough job to sell on so uh, let's start taking them apart and see what's what I think we should start with the easy one to begin with let's start with Astro Walls and then see what's happening with it So if we have a look at back here, we see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws to undo. So let's undo them and then hopefully it will show us the lights of the inside. Okay, some of these screws are different sizes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in this little metal tray here and then I know which way they came out. off now now I forgot to mention that this actually came out in 1981 and it was 25 pound when it came out and in today's money that works out as 93 pounds so you can see that these were really expensive this one here came out in 1983 and this one was 30 pounds so 29.99 so in today's money that's going to be 98 pounds so this came out a couple of years after this one this one also had stereo sound so it had left and right as well and if you have a look you've got switches there to enable the left and right okay so let's pop the back off this and see what uh, see what lies inside a bit annoying okay so that just popped off like that oh look at this right let's just see if I can work out what's sprung out here so these are the oh that's fine these are just for the power and stuff like that and for select and start so that's all fine that's gonna make sense 
we've got our little selector switch here to turn on and off and this is for our button here so again that's that's fine okay so that's just all the front bits there so this is it got a little joystick here got our buttons here and here we can take those off give them a good clean and this is nice so this is how you get the different colors so these just all light up if you have a look it's uh, just lights behind these kind of I don't know what you would call them like stencils in a way so basically everything on this row has to be red everything on this row has to be yellow and everything up here has to be blue and again down the bottom it's going to be yellow again so if you were to swap these around you could actually change the appearance of the game so that's kind of fun Oh, look down the bottom there, what's this? Does it look like there's some kind of leakage or something? Can you see that black, whatever that black mark is? That doesn't look too healthy, does it? Well, I see, maybe it's not a battery contact thing. Maybe something else has happened to this. And this is a port here where we can plug in our adapters because, a power adapter, because obviously with this here, you're gonna eat up the batteries quite quickly and it will work out quite expensive just got the one speaker here right okay uh, I think we're going to take off this bit here to get into this area very clean on the inside all right so that's just a cover like so you can see all the different colors there now Ah, right, okay, look at the old ribbon cables here and here, and they look like they're actually soldered on. Got all these pins. We have a chip under here with like a lump of foam on it. And a torch. Or flashlight. What's that say? NEC Japan. Not sure what these are here. Massive rails on both sides and also here as well. The capacitors don't look like they've leaked. It's a nice little symbol, isn't it? Let's cover the chip up again. Right, well the wires from the battery terminals definitely look okay. And they go down, one goes to the adapter here and then it goes on to here. So if I put batteries in, I should be able to get a reading off around about six volts because there's four 1.5 batteries on here. And if I don't, it means that the terminals are bad. If I do, it means that something else is happening. So I think I'm gonna put the batteries back in the back and then let's start getting a reading around the place. I just wanna have a quick look under here just to see if there is anything. No, so there's nothing there. So nice in the older toys because you can just, they just look so simple. nice feeling joystick that has I might as well screw this back down because we don't need to get under that again so I've got it on DC volts so let's go on these two here see what we get it actually says there plus and uh, yeah plus six nope 
Brilliant. Okay, well, we've got nothing there, so that's fantastic. So hopefully it is just bad contacts. Let me just go on to the bit here. So that's the red one, that's the black. Let's see if we've got something here. No, we haven't. So that means then that it is going to be, unless there's something else wrong with it, I am very worried why it's got this kind of black ink splat down here, but maybe that has just happened in the manufacturing process. So that means that for some reason there's no electricity flowing through here. So what we're going to do is give them a good clean. It could be as simple as if you look closely there, let me get my torch, you can just see that it is a little bit corroded. There, on this one. So I'm going to get my fiberglass pen, put my gloves on and give this all a good clean. I'm going to spray a bit of white vinegar in there as well just in case there is a bit of corrosion because these are alkaline batteries so the white vinegar will help to neutralise it. So all this is, is basically loads of little bits of fiberglass, kind of like fiberglass rods, hundreds of them, and uh, it's just abrasive. So when I'm rubbing it across here, it's just scraping away at the surface. Okay, now when I'm scraping it, it feels smooth. It doesn't seem as noisy and as coarse as it did before. So now I'm going to get some IPA alcohol and give it a good wipe down. Again, this one here is what I would call a genuine fault. Now obviously all faults are genuine, meaning they're real, they don't work, but it hasn't been looked at before. So my mate Hugh would have just put batteries in, oh it doesn't work, and then thought it's broken. So like it's, it hasn't been tested, it hasn't been given to anybody and been messed around with for half an hour or an hour. So in that case then, it's often much easier to fix. I mean, I don't know whether I am going to fix this one, but to me, it does seem like it's just battery uh, corrosion. So uh, as long as there's nothing else wrong with it, it should, in theory, be a very easy fix. But obviously, when you've bought this on eBay, you could be buying it when somebody like myself or somebody much better, much, much better, has looked at it already, in which case then there's less chance that you're going to be able to fix it because all the easy fixes have already been done and then sold as working. So that's why it's much nicer to have like a, a genuine fix. For example, when your children and stuff have toys, well they're going to be genuine fixes because you know that they were working beforehand and then it's gone faulty. And a lot of the time it is easy to fix that thing. So. It's not always real life when you buy something on eBay because you might think it's really, really hard because everything you buy doesn't work. But that could be because it's been looked at previously, even if it says untested, because obviously you don't really know if it has been untested or not. Okay, now looking at that, it looks like it's sort of brought out the corrosion. Look at it, it's kind of gone kind of gone rusty. So I'm going to give this another clean now. I'm wondering if it's possible that it's, it can't be possible to be rusty underneath the plating, I don't think. A helping hand with this just to scrape the rust away. I don't want to go crazy on it because I don't want to scrape all the plating away because if I scrape away the, the nickel plating or whatever it is then it's just going to oxidise again really quickly and then maybe a year or two down the line it's going to stop making a contact again it will have to be cleaned again. What you can do is if this was your own one, if you weren't going to sell it, you could put some silicon grease on it and I know it will kind of look a little bit messy but at least then it's not going to oxidise and the uh, the battery, the power from the battery will still flow through it. That's what I'm 
I'm talking about this stuff here. I'm definitely happy with that. It looks better than it did before, you see? Let's pop the batteries in it now and see if it's going to work. Okay, I presume with this we're just going to have to short across these contacts. No, maybe not. Yay! Yes, and we got lights, look at that. Woohoo! Brilliant. Right, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to clean it all up before I actually test the game out. But how nice was it hearing that sound there? I wonder when the last time there was... Uh, I wonder... I bet you this hasn't been turned on in at least 20 years. It can't have been really, can it? 20 years would be... 1998. 17 years after this came out. Yeah, it'd be very unlikely that this was turned on in the last 20 years. Right, so what I'm going to do is... I'm basically just going to take all this apart and give it a, a real good clean, just, just with water, just with warm water, just to get rid of all the dust. Oh, look at that, there's little kind of, can you see this little, it's like a galaxy scene. And also, they've done it in a curve as well. There we go. So now it gives me an opportunity to clean all this. I shouldn't need to clean these here. That should be fine. And this should be fine. This must just magnify it. You see there? Thin hands, fat hands. Yeah? So that just uh, that just magnifies it. So I'm going to keep that the white way around just in case it makes a difference. And now I'm going to give this all a really good, a real good wipe down. So I've got to be with this, I'm just going to do this with a wet wipe because I don't want, uh, obviously, I don't want to have to take all this out because then I'd have to unsolder the, the wires from the battery. So I'm going to start with this, I'm just going to fast forward through it all. Uh, I'm going to clean this and then basically I'm just going to take this up to the bathroom and give it a clean. So you won't see me cleaning that, but you know I'm just using warm water. And I'll be cleaning this as well, obviously. Clean up lovely, all the sort of white paint marks at the corner are all just disappearing. So I've cleaned absolutely everything. Remember the battery compartment there? Look how well it's come up. Still a few little marks around the place, but everything else has just come up absolutely perfect. So I took the screen out here and gave everything a really good clean. It wasn't actually in bad condition, just a bit of, you know, layer of dust around the place. So now what we have to do is put it all back together and then we can test it. So obviously putting it back together is just going to be a reversal of how we took it apart. And with things like this, you can see that they're only going to go in one way because it doesn't allow you to put it in the wrong way. And also if you have a look, there's a little kind of cut out bit here and that just makes a tiny little gives you a little bit of a feel like a kind of when it clicks on and off with this little groove bit here you can see the way it jumps in and out of it right so that's what we're going to be doing But while I'm here, I'm just going to clean up the little contacts here just for the button presses. They already look very clean, but just in case there's a little bit of tarnish on them.
Okay, so before I put the batteries in, you can see that it now looks really good. It's come out really clean. Look at that, there's no dust now in between any of those bits. The screen's got a few scratches on it, but it's going to be fine because you're looking through the screen anyway. That sticker shouldn't be here, I'm pretty sure. That's like the original sticker, I'm pretty sure that should be on the side or possibly the back or maybe uh, the bottom, maybe on the side somewhere. It looks a bit out of place there, but that's where it is, so I'll leave it there. Right, let's pop the batteries in and then we can do a little bit of gameplay. Ready? There it is. Look at it. Right, so select two, three. They must be levels of hardness. One, two, three, four. Start. And there's the ship at the bottom. Yeah, and it's moving left and right and fire. Oh, excellent. It's kind of like Space Invaders. Right, okay, let's get this on the table and let's see if we can have a proper game. Really loud. Right, the fire's not working. Let me turn it off and back on again. I've definitely seen bullets coming out to begin with. No, that fire's not working. Hold on, let me put it down here. Oh, no. No, it's not doing it. Right, so maybe, because that hasn't been done in so long, maybe something's blown now. I'm going to have to watch that bit of the video back. I'm sure when I pressed that button to begin with that the fire did work. But now it's not. There's absolutely nothing happening there at all. Right, okay, I'm going to watch back the video and see if there was bullets coming out or whether it was just my imagination. That's a shame, isn't it? Okay, I watched it back and it was definitely firing to begin with. I've seen it two or three times and then it went completely. But now, listen to this, and this might be a good sign. When I turn it on, it keeps making noises even though I'm not pressing anything, so... Can you hear? Listen. See, it's making that noise. Oh, there you go, look, it's firing now. How weird. What is going on? Right, I'm not overly happy with it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit apart again, just in case I've misaligned something, because that is, uh, that is weird. And that noise now, I don't know if that should be on it, because before, I don't know if I noticed that. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to watch the video back again. Right, what I'm going to do is take this apart and see if I've done something wrong here. Well, I really can't see anything wrong there. Let's just take it all, all off and see. Everything's completely dry. These don't look like they go a certain way. It looks like they're completely reversible, so it shouldn't make a difference which way they go round. Just looking at the fire button, see if that's completely reversible. Which it looks like it is because you've got the grooves there, those things there. Oh, 
Oh, to me, it all looks all looks perfect. Let me put it back together. Maybe when I pushed it in last time, something was slightly misaligned. So I'm going to do it completely upside down this time. All right, well, that seems okay to me. I'm going to try it again now. You might want to hold your ears because of the annoying noise. Okay, so that must be just a kind of sound off the game itself, that beat in there. I thought that was like a button being repeatedly pressed. Oh, there you go. Listen to it. So obviously it's different levels. Right, let's see if it's working now. Yeah, you can hear it. Isn't that weird? I wonder, what, I wonder what caused that first time round, because I was pretty sure I put it together correctly. I mean, it wasn't really that hard to put together. And this, uh, you know, I did wipe it with the rub and alcohol, not the rub and alcohol, sorry, the IPA. I wonder whether it just didn't quite evaporate off and it was causing a continuous button press. Yeah, look, if I hold that down now, it's not doing a continuous press. I bet that's what it was. Just look. See? Doesn't do anything. Right, okay, let's get this on the table and do a bit of gameplay just to see what it looks like. Right, okay, apologies. I can't actually get a good picture on it. It kind of looks blurred when I view it through the viewfinder. It must be something with the, the curve of the screen. But let me just, uh, just give it a go just to show you that it is working. Let me just try to complete at least one level of it kind of hard because I can't view it properly through the viewfinder but you can see it counting up up, up on top there can you see 180 200 I'm not sure how uh, oh here we go that looks like it near the end of the level. I don't know how you, what, what's the objective of each level. It looks like it's just to kill everybody. It's amazing because now you see this and you sort of think, well, that music and stuff would irritate you. But at the time, I remember at school, at the last day of term, people were allowed to bring in their toys. And unfortunately, toys like this, you know, they were expensive back then. So not many people had them. But then uh, on the last day of term, when you were allowed to bring in your toys, sometimes a few people would bring in stuff like this. And the, the crowds around the table would just be immense until the uh, batteries run out. And then it would be disappointment all round. But, uh, yeah, you need to remember that, obviously, we're not used to this now. We're used to much better. But, but at the time... Oh, hold on, what's happening here? Oh, look at this. This is different. At the time, you know, this was, this was pretty amazing. There we go, I'm doing pretty good. Right, I think it's time to move on to the next one. But what a nice little fix that was. Shame we had to take it apart again the second time. I hate it when I have something that doesn't work and I don't know the reason why. If I took it apart there and seen a big, you know, lump of water on there or if some bit of foil had somehow got caught on it, then I'd understand it. But when I don't fully understand something, it's annoying. But it is working okay now. And uh, let me just try it one more time. And I'm pretty sure... It was to do with the uh, IPA alcohol, maybe not having rubbed off completely or something along those lines. I don't know. But then again, does that conduct electricity? I thought that was the whole point of it. Not sure. Right, okay. Let's move on to the harder one now, which will be the Firefox F7. Right, so it's time to look at the Firefox F7. And this is the one with the really bad corrosion. And like I said before, it's not even worth putting batteries in because this spring has completely snapped off. You can see it should be twice as long as what it is now. But that's not a problem because you can buy springs off places like eBay. So I bought these. 
I think they cost me about £3, which is probably quite expensive, but remember that that's because it's all the postage, because in the UK that can't go as a standard letter, so it has to go as a large letter, and that's what kind of whacks the price up. But still, nice and clean, and then if it fixes it, then it's a very small price to pay. But obviously if you were to buy these in bulk, you'd be able to get them for next to nothing. Right, okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart. Oh, there you go, look, the sticker. Do you remember I said the sticker on the other one? And it's in this place here, so that's exactly where the other sticker should have gone. So it's been peeled off and it's been stuck onto there. So again, with this one, I'm hoping it is just going to be the bad terminals at the back. But I'm going to take it apart again and you can see all the dust and dirt in here. Hopefully by the time I finish, that will be all clean again. So I've got high hopes for this one. So this one came out in 1983, so potentially this could be 35 years old. As I say, I don't know when this one was actually bought, but it wouldn't be too long after that. Right, okay, so the joystick is stopping it from coming out, which makes me think that I might be able to just pull that out, unless there's some other way of separating this. Or maybe I maybe I twist it and then I can see what's happening. Yeah, I'm just gonna twist it to begin with. Yeah, good job I didn't pull that. I don't think it does come undone. I think you have to undo yeah, you have to undo this one and this one here. And that one is missing. So this has been taken apart before. Look, can you see there should be a screw in there, but there's not there's, there's nothing there. So this looks like it's been taken apart before. So maybe this one might not work. Maybe this was put up into the attic because there was a, a fault with it. Okay, it's a different design than, than before. That is weird about the joystick there. I would have thought that you would have been able to pull that out because this just looks a bit awkward. Let me take it apart here, these three screws here. Also, if you have a look here, can you see a tiny little bit of corrosion up here as well? So the corrosion's probably gone a little bit further on this one. Complete different design, isn't it? Now the joystick on this one doesn't feel as nice, but it does look like it moves in all directions, rather than just left and right. Oh, so look, it's just a D-pad. Yeah, just working just like a D-pad. Right, okay, so that's good. I can take all of these off and clean them. This is the joystick here. And let me actually take it take it apart. Oh well, okay, I'll still I'll still be able to clean it all. Right, so there's a ball bearing in here that's just gone flying. So the ball bearing must go on top of that there. Like that. Then goes into this one here. Well done now. No, it doesn't, does it? That's going to go in there like that. And then the ball bearing is going to sit in. The ball bearing must sit in that little bit, like so. I've got to be careful when I put all this back together that it's in the right place. It's 
it's lovely the way it all goes together and it can be completely separated. You know, it doesn't look like there's any plastic welding or anything on it. So now I can really give that a lovely clean without worrying about damaging anything else. Nicely made. Alright, so these are all the switches. Spring for the uh, fire button. Right, let's have a look at this here now. So again here, it's just a little thing to make it look nice. So in theory you could change that to whatever you wanted to change it to. And also if you have a look, it's kind of like a purpley, pinky colour. And there, if you have a close look there now, you can see on the screen all the things you're going to be coming up against. So can you see the ship down the bottom? So it looks like the ship has got one, two, three, four, five movements. So every time you move the ship, it lights up. But obviously you can't see the rest of this because it's all kind of blacked out. Because when this is on it, can you see you can't see it as much. Yeah. So you're just going to be seeing when it's lit up. And then we have these things coming down. These must be like a sort of... I don't know, like a, a tie wing fighter uh, thing from Star Wars. And you can see they're very small up here and they get bigger and bigger. And also, in between that as well, there looks like there's yellow bits. And it looks like there's some sort of level up the side here and there's numbers here, 1 to 9. And then we've got H and L and F and E. So all these things will light up and as well we've got white things that look like kind of like... Uh, icicles or something coming down from the top so they must be something that fire things down so that's all it is it just lights them up when uh, when you're playing the game funny thing is if you have a look here can you see we've also got that kind of black ink splodge thing so maybe that is part of the manufacturing process unless it's a bit weird how they were how it's on both of the screens this one and the one we did earlier So there's nothing under here, this is connected to this via a ribbon cable which is soldered into its place so I just need to clean this up. You can see there is quite a bit of dirt and corrosion here. You see that? Right, but, but that board can stay in place, we don't need to worry about this one. And the same logo as before, remember that logo? Manufacturers of Toys and Games, Epoch Company Limited. Now, although this is made in Japan, I don't know whether Grandstand is uh, a British make from years ago or whether they were sold worldwide or not. I really don't know. So if you're, if you're from America and you used to have consoles like this, just add it down in the comments because obviously I remember them from the UK, but I don't know whether it was a worldwide thing or not. Right, again, so we've got the plus and minus from the batteries there. They go to the power adapter here. And then they, where do they go to after that? You've got the red one going off to here. And the negative is going somewhere else. Let's have a look. Yeah, the negative's going off to the board here. This definitely looks like it's, there's more to it than the other one. So you can see here we have a, a big speaker here, a very big speaker, and then a small speaker like the other one there. So it definitely looks like more, uh, more's gone into this one. Nice huge big screen on it as well. And there's a light here. Well, that all looks, all looks good. Again, chip that says NEC Japan, and this one says NEC Japan. Right, okay, well, I'm happy with all that. So I think what we're going to do is just concentrate in the battery compartment.
So the main point of me taking it apart is just to see the inside of it, but also to allow me to clean it as well, because now that this is all taken apart up here, it's much easier to clean. With this, I think to clean it, I'm gonna take it out completely, because remember, I have to replace this spring here. So I'm gonna lift these tabs up here, and I'm hoping the whole thing will just come downwards like so. Yeah, it looks like it's starting to come out. Let me just give it a helping hand. Here it comes. Excellent, so now that's gonna make it really easy for me to change that spring. You know, I don't even know if I have to solder it into place. It looks like it's just held in with that little clamp thing down the bottom. Right, okay. Now I'm gonna leave these for the time being because I'll have to unsolder that. So I'm just gonna concentrate on this side to begin with. So with this, yeah, look, you can just, looks like you can just unscrew it, which is just brilliant. There you go, look at that. So that's the old one. Let me get the new one. I'm hoping the new one's not too, not too big. It's definitely longer than the others, but not much. It should uh, still compress down. Right, it's a slightly different design on this side here. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to snip it to allow me to thread it through here. I'm just going to get some cutters. Right, so I'm just basically going to snap this section here. There we go. So now it will allow me to thread through just like the old one. I'm just going to see if it's going to work to begin with and then I can worry about cleaning this up. Try to use some pliers to get it through. Yeah, okay, that's definitely gonna go through, yeah? So I'll have to thread it and then just push it down on that. And then obviously it will just conduct through here. So before I do that, I'm gonna give this a clean up because it's just ever so slightly tarnished just up the top. So again, just to try to neutralize the alkaline batteries I'm just going to use an acid which is vinegar now I'm just going to clean it with some IPA just going to get a wet wipe and clean the inside of here Right, that will do for the moment. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to unsolder the two wires on this side, pull out this one, and this one will really need to be cleaned up. And I'm going to replace the spring here as well because this one is uh, this one is quite rusty as well. So I might as well. I've got two springs. I might as well replace them. And uh, then I'm going to clean the inside of here with IPA just to get rid of all the the residue and stuff from the uh, the wet wipe. I'm going to get my soldering iron out and just clean off these two. Luckily, it's all labelled up for me. You see plus here and minus here. And if I was ever confused, I can see the back here is minus anyway and plus here. So even if it didn't have that there, I would know which way to put the wires around. Now, for the soldering, I'm just going to use my cheap old soldering iron rather than setting up my proper one because it's only going to take a few seconds just to take those wires off and put them back on again. So I don't need anything too fancy. So I'll just let that heat up. While I'm waiting for that, I might as well now put the proper spring on here.
just use an IPA on this side just while I put the spring back in this side. harder to get in because the spring's a bit thicker than the old one so to get it into the grooves a little bit a uh, little bit harder right, okay so they're in so now I can just bend them like they were before. I'll take my gloves off for the soldering. There we go. Luckily the corrosion hasn't gone up to here, the wires are perfect. There we go. Well, I unplugged the soldering iron for the time being and then after they're cleaned up I can solder it back on. So now we're doing exactly the same. We're going to lift both of these up and push them through. Now these are two separate ones, which of course they would be otherwise it would be all shortened together. This one's going to be a bit hard to get off because it's so corroded here. There we are. Right, let's clean them with vinegar. Luckily the spring side isn't too bad. Actually looking at this spring, I'm going to clean this one up because then it means I've got this one as a spare and as well as that, because this one's a bit bigger, then I don't want the, I don't want the batteries under too much pressure, otherwise they're constantly going to want to spring out. So I might as well reuse that spring because it actually looks like it's just a little bit of surface rust which I will be able to get rid of easy. It's just completely disintegrating. Look, it's uh, it's gone completely. But it should be okay because as long as the battery makes contact with this bit here, then this bit is going to be held on at the top with the wire. So as long as it doesn't keep breaking up, then I'm going to be I'm going to be okay. Going further and further up. Right. Okay. This isn't very good. Now maybe you can buy these, but to get it to fit is going to be quite unlikely. You know, to get the, the exact same size might be quite hard. I don't know how many types there are. But this bit here seems strong. So from here on up seems okay. So I think we will still be just about all right. That's perfect. We're just missing all the bit down the bottom. No, it's still it's still coming off. It's still coming off.
clean all these in IPA now and then I'll have to work out what I'm going to do with this one because obviously there's a, a lot that's missing from it. So I might see if I've got any metal around the house that I can perhaps connect it onto. I mean it is still going to make the contact, it's not a, you know, it's not a problem, it's definitely going to make the contact because I've still got the, the thick part of it here. It's just, it's just going to look a bit bad. with the original spring and it's come out absolutely perfect so I'm glad I didn't swap that spring over because this one is going to be just fine so I'm going to pop this one back in and then I have to worry about the other side see if you can buy these and then I need to look around the house and see if I've got any way of fixing this. I just checked on eBay and you can buy them but they don't look like this one here. I think it's going to be quite unlikely to get exactly the same dimensions as this one. So I was typing in battery contact for a C cell because that's what these batteries are. And you can get them but they were more like a square shaped. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got an old cable drum here and this looks to be relatively thin and uh, it's got good continuity on it so I'm thinking that I'm going to try to cut this one into shape and then uh, maybe I might be able to solder onto this one or kind of put it behind this one to give it a little bit of extra strength down here it does work fine as it is it's just that I think over time maybe it's possible now because this isn't going right the way around anymore that possibly this could get dented in so if I can just do a tiny little bit of extra things to strengthen it up then I think I'll be happier so that's what I'm going to work on now I'm going to try and make something out of this it might work so now what I can do is I can try and fill under here with solder to try and pack it out a bit done is I've put the drum of the cable cut it to shape and I just soldered it on the edge there and also then I poured solder when it was red hot into there so now it shouldn't collapse anymore so the battery is still making a contact on this bit here which is the original part but now it's unlikely to collapse in because we've got the plastic in here so let's just push this into place and then it's not hollow anymore you can see so I'm actually quite happy with that. I know it doesn't look brilliant, but it now will make a, will make a contact. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. So now I just need to solder the wires back onto the top. Right, so they're back on now. You can see that basically I've built it up with solder so I've put the plate on it there and then filled the hollow bit with solder and then built it down so now when we put the batteries in hopefully they're not going to crush it flat so let's have a let's have a go at it now obviously with these batteries here they're under a lot of pressure because the springs bigger not on this side this side's perfect but can you see how it's wanting to push out So now when we go on here, we should have six volts. Oh, 
which we do, 5.9, there we go. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a real good clean up, again just using warm water like I did before, put it all together and then hopefully it might be working. Okay, so it's really clean now. It didn't come out quite as good as the other one because there's quite a few scratches around the place. But if you look at it now in all the grooves, there's no more dust or dirt. And now when I put the buttons back in, you can see that they're going to be nice and clean. A few scratches on here. And again, you can see it's magnified. Right, let's put it all back together now. Right, so we're about to close it up now. So I've cleaned all these bits up here, took a little bit of corrosion away from up here and given these all a rub so they're nice and clean. This is where they've been soldered back on, those wires. And that's the terminals at the back there. So really happy with how that one's come out there. You can see there now that really that should operate as good as it was when it was new. Right, so now I need to put this back in. Remember, there was only one screw holding this in. Okay, that's gone back together nicely. I just need to put in all the bottom screws now and it'll be done. So let's pop the batteries in and see if it's going to work or not. Yeah. That's, I recognise that music. Okay, so here we go. So I think I have to shoot the ships when it gets to that line across there. You see that kind of blue arrow with the red thing in the middle? And then it should count up on the top right hand side. There you go, you see? Left. If you look at the right hand side, that level there, because it was on F before, now it's on E, and now it's going down. I've got one more, one more hit and I'm gone, I think. Ah. Right, okay, well, uh, it's interesting. If I'm honest with you, I think I prefer Astro Wars, but maybe it's because I don't fully understand this one because you probably have to read the instructions to understand it. Right, so that is it. Both Grandstand games are now working, which is fantastic news. I really enjoy doing these ones because most of it was just cleaning and it was kind of nice getting all the dirt out of them and making them look as good as, well, not as good as new, but, you know, not far off. Now, I have just noticed here that there is a H and an L, so this isn't up and down, it's left and right and H and L, which must stand for high and low. So I might read the instructions on this one so I can fully understand it, and maybe this will might be the better game because this is probably going to be more involved. It's just that without reading the instructions, I kind of like this one more because it was just more understandable. But as far as the fix is concerned, I preferred fixing this one because there was more to it, like the little spring that needed replacing. And also I was really proud of that little metal thing that I put on the back and then soldered up. So I'm hoping now that that will 
repair will last a decent amount of time. So uh, that's it, I now need to let my mate Hugh know about this and hopefully he'll be pleased that they're both working and then he can decide what he wants to do with them, whether he wants to sell them or whether he wants to keep them or not. Selling them wise, I don't think he's actually gonna get much money. They're probably gonna be worth maybe 20 pound each possibly £30, that sort of price, because there's no box with them, so they're not going to be worth a huge amount of money. But it's still nice to have them work, especially when they're up on however old, 35 years old, so it's good to have them still working. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.